Hello, grade nine science class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson five, physical and chemical changes. Uh, it's going to throw back a little bit to the physical and chemical properties lesson that we already had. As you can note in the key points, number one, uh, we've got properties there. So we're going to recall that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit first. And then we're going, into, we're going to get into what physical changes are and what chemical changes are and how to recognize each of those. And then you are going to do a lot of that. You are going to recognize these changes. We're gonna continue on with some of these chemical and physical changes into our next lesson. So uh, hang on tight. Remember first, physical properties describe how a substance looks. Um, they are characteristics of a substance. It doesn't really matter how much of them they are. Uh, they have the same properties. So it might be color, luster, malleability, ductility, magnetism, the melting point, the boiling point, conductivity, and solubility, all are examples of physical properties. Um, they don't have anything to do with anything else. No reactions, no air, no water, no acids. It's just about what um, the characteristics of that substance are. Chemical properties describe how the substance behaves or how it reacts. So some examples that we gave were, does it catch on fire or does it not? How does it react? Does it react with acids or bases or either of them? How does it react with those? Is it corrosive? Uh, does it react with the air? Does it explode when it touches water? What, what does it do? How does it behave? That, those were chemical properties. So when we talk about changes, we're going to talk about if these properties are changed or not. Uh, when we have a physical change, the properties of the um, initial and final product stay the same. Let's get into it. Physical changes, key point two. Uh, when a substance undergoes a change in form, state, uh, or shape, that is a physical change. So when you boil water and it becomes a vapor, that's a physical change. It is still water, water to water vapor. Uh, the substance is still the same after a physical change. So an example might be tearing up a piece of paper or shattering a glass window. Uh, it's still glass. Although it might not function the same, it is still glass. If you break a piece of plastic, it is still plastic. If you melt ice cream, the composition hasn't changed. It's just in a different form. So physical changes occur when the object is unchanged in the type of material that it is. If you break a light bulb, it's still a glass. It doesn't have that. So that's a physical change. It hasn't really changed anything about it, any of its physical properties. All of its physical properties stay the same. The glass is still clear. Uh, the plastic is still um, bendy. And, you know, the properties are still the same. When we have a chemical change, uh, the substance is changed into one or more different substances and these have different properties. So although the atoms are the same, and we'll get into what atoms are later, uh, they're rearranged into different molecules. They look completely different. The products are different than the reactants. The beginning is different than the final product. Something new is produced. So some examples would be if a car is rusting. You start with a metal, and then eventually it degrades and it gets rusty and it turns into something else. Iron oxide is what rust is called. When you have wood and you burn it, it starts off to be wood, but it eventually turns into ash. It is chemically different. It has different properties. Uh, there are many, many examples, like if you cook an egg. So when you start with a raw egg, uh, it is formed in one way, and when you cook it, it turns into a completely different thing. It has different tastes and a different texture, uh, different nutrient value. So it turns into something else that is a chemical change. What we're going to do, oh, 10, si 10 signs of a chemical change. These are really important. Make sure you write these down. You can definitely write them down in your own words, but it's very important to remember what the signs of a chemical change are. So if you see bubbles, that means that a gas has been produced. And if a gas is produced and trying to escape, um, that is a new substance, especially if you started with a liquid. Uh, if a precipitate forms, so a precipitate is a solid. 
So if you start with a liquid and a solid forms, that's something completely new. Um, so something new is produced. That is a chemical change. If the color changes, uh, that is a chemical change. When you're mixing two liquids together and the chemical changes, sorry, the color changes, it's a chemical change. If light is emitted, that means you're releasing energy and uh, bonds are being broken, that's a chemical change. Uh, if the volume changes, that would indicate that you have a gas being produced. And if you have a gas being produced, you have bubbles, and that means it's a chemical change. If the temperature changes, so when bonds are broken, heat is released by, by energy, and as a result, the temperature changes, um, a temperature change occurs. So you can have temperature changes, and that means that you have a chemical change. Uh, bonds are being rearranged. Uh, if you have a change in conductivity, so if you, the electrical conductivity is high and it goes to low, you have a chemical change. If it goes from low to high, you do as well. And we're going to get into what uh, conductivity is more in the electrical unit, uh, which is next. Number eight is if the boiling or melting point changes. So if you change those, then the substance has been altered. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw your attention to all these properties that we've talked about. If these properties change, that means you have a chemical change. If the properties are not changing, you do not have a chemical change. So it's all about the properties. Are the properties the same in the beginning as they are in the end? If the change, uh, in, if there's a change in smell or taste, um, that means that you have a chemical change, but a reminder not to taste or smell the chemicals in the lab. Um, and if you have a change in distinct chemical properties, uh, so if it reacts with acid, but then after the change it doesn't react with acid, that would be a chemical change. Some, the properties about it are different. So again, it's all about if the properties change uh, if they do, it's a chemical change. If they do not, it is a physical change. Let's practice a little bit. I would encourage you to pause here and do these on your own, uh, but I'm going to do them here as well so you can check to see if you got them right. And then there's a bunch of work for you to do that is very similar, um, determining which are physical changes and which are chemical changes. So, margarine spoils in the fridge. That would be a chemical change because it is turning into something different. You're getting mold and something else in there. If chocolate goes soft in the hot sun, uh, chocolate is still chocolate even if it's soft. So that would be a physical change. We have a clear liquid and it's mixed with a base and it turns purple. So that sounds like a chemical change. We have a color change. Uh, that means that its properties are different and we have a chemical change. Metal on a bike frame rusts, so that means we have a chemical change. We knew that one, we talked about rust previously. Water disappear, disappears from glass over time, so that's essentially water evaporating, changing a state, that's water to water, so that means it's a physical change. It hasn't actually changed what it is. Sawdust is formed when wood is being sawed. Um, sawdust is still wood, it's just in a different form, so that to me would be a physical change. We have brown liquid being formed when coffee grinds are put in hot water. Ooh, that is an interesting one. Um, to me, that is a physical change because the coffee grinds are still coffee grounds. They're just dissolved in the water. Um, they still smell the same and taste the same if you were to uh, put them in your mouth. So that would be a physical change. Uh, we have ice breaking into smaller pieces. It's still ice. That's a physical change. And when CO2 is dissolved in carbonated drinks. So when CO2 is dissolved in carbonated drinks, it's not changing from what CO2 is, right? CO2 is CO2. Just like water is water when it evaporates, therefore that would just be uh, a physical change, a change in its state. Uh, if you guys have any questions about these or you want to argue about them, please let me know. I'm happy to do that. Uh, and if you need help with the assignment here, I will also help you with that. So ident your job is to identify chemical and physical changes. Use what we've learned about chemical and physical changes to categorize each of the following examples. They're in your notes into either physical or chemical changes. And there are times when you are required to show your thinking. You're required to explain why you think it's a physical or a chemical change. Again, if you have any questions, I'll be here to help.
Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.